Oh, so I've got two guests here, Brittany and Daniel. And we're going to be talking about standard versus jumper ISTJs. So this will be the first video in a series of three videos on ISTJs. So this one covers standard versus jumper ISTJs. The second one will be looking at different animal stacks in ISTJs. And the third one will be looking at different sexual modalities in ISTJs. So I thought we could just introduce ourselves, say our full OPS type, how we got into OPS, and anything else we want to share. So my name is Laura, and I'm typed as MF, S-I-T-E, blast, play, sleep, consume, last. I've been into OPS since October 2018, and I just stumbled upon it kind of by accident. I was on Facebook, and they listed like groups you might be interested in joining, and I saw the name Objective Personality, and I thought, oh, okay, this is about how to more objectively measure someone's personality because so many of the other groups were so subjective. And I didn't realize at the time that it was a, like a different typology system that it had 512 types. So I went into the group and I'm like, okay, what's blast and what's masculine and feminine functions? What, what do all these jargon mean? And, and luckily they helped helped me out with it and I got hooked on it and I got typed in um, March, 2019. And yep, that's a little bit about me. I, I work in a public library as my profession and I study OPS and I learn Spanish on the side. Okay, Brittany. So I guess we're kind of opposites there because I honestly had Nothing, no interest in OPS at all. My husband loved it, fell in love, got officially typed, and then brought me along for the ride. And so I've been officially typed. I am uh, MFSIFI, sleep, blast, consume, play. Um, it's been a fun ride, very interesting, very weird, because it wasn't what I expected it to be, but been fun. And having my husband be almost the opposite of me has really helped as far as seeing the coins and the differences and things of that nature. Uh, what's your husband's type? Okay, let me try not to say, because remember he was retyped. It's still a habit to say his original type. But so we're both MS, or MF. He is S-E, um, S-E-T-I, um, da -da 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 -da. He's now blast, uh, blast, last instead of, uh, or sleep last instead of blast, last. And he is consume, play. So consume, play, um, blast, sleep. All right. Okay. And you, Daniel? Uh, so my name's Daniel. Um, I've been in OPS for about, I think, a little over a year now. And I got into it because, um, it was kind of random. I think I went down the MBTI rabbit hole after um, a past girlfriend had introduced, reintroduced me to MBTI again. And I started to get interested in, you know, okay, how do I retype myself again? Um, because I had been typed as a certain type and it was INTP. And I figured, oh, maybe now's another time to just check that again. Um, and then I found that system, the OPS system, and then that was a whole rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, like Laura, you were explaining, it was just a completely different system, and uh, I was uh, not familiar with any of it. But it sounded more uh, developed than you know what I had seen on you know casually browsing websites, and I think that's what piqued my interest. It the the whole idea of it being challenging and a puzzle really to solve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like sometimes I'm still trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. I'm still trying to process certain things in my type. And every time I type somebody from the class, it is like a puzzle to solve. So, yeah. Okay. So I think what we're going to do is start with talking about Savior DE versus Savior DI. Because this is one thing that's different in standard versus jumper ISTJs. 
I was just going to I was just going to cause a little chaos here because I realized I didn't fully answer your question oh. about what my type was. <laughs> so oh, I was yeah. typed as <laughs> That's right, accuracy. Let's hear it. <laughs> I was typed as M F uh S I T E blast sleep play consume less. Okay. So I thought I'd wrap that up there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So so almost the same type as me, just switch the middle two animals. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So so now I'm gonna kind of talk about jumpers versus standard ISTJs. So so standard versus jumper ISTJs differ in two important ways. So one is um, DE versus DI. So a standard ISTJ has Savior DE in the form of Savior TE, whereas a jumper ISTJ has Savior DI in the form of FI. So I kind of wanted to kind of compare and contrast Savior DE versus Savior DI. So maybe we'll start with, with DE first. So, so Daniel, how does Savior DE work for you? Uh, I think it comes off as um, wanting to figure things out always first of all, um, and not really necessarily tapping into how I feel about what I'm figuring out. That's like usually in the background. Um, I think now it's, uh, it's still, I've gotten better over time to try to flip between the two. Um, like, how am I feeling about what I'm figuring out? Like, is this something I want to do right now? Um, and so that's kind of the tension I think I've been feeling, and it's become more apparent that um, uh, I am, I do, by default, go into, like, let's figure something out. Let's, you know, think things through, um, as opposed to tapping into the feelings. Mm hmm yeah, and I think it's kind of kind of similar with with, with me as a savior savior DE, and and for me it's just kind of always wanting to check in with other people and kind of kind of got to get got to get their okay with it, and I got to listen, I got to listen to their reasons, and and sometimes I'm not really listening to my FI enough, you know, because I'm obligated towards those reasons. Well, how about you, Brittany? You you have Savior DI, so see this is this is where it's kind of hard for me because yes, I have Savior DI, but because that DE is technically double activated, it is almost this tug of war constantly yeah. between the two. So it is really is a, a balancing match. It is um, on one side is the mentality of instead of me constantly going after them and checking on them and all of this, if my bucks aren't in a row, how can I possibly, it's, it's get the plank out of my own eye before I try to remove the speck out of someone else's because I'm just going to do damage in the process if I'm not in the right place or the right alignment. And there's still that tug of war of, no, you need to care about others, they matter more. But then having that, okay, no, it's an airplane, everything's going down, mask has to go on, then I can stop everybody else from panicking and we can put the mask on on them. But the still focus on self mm -hmm. really isn't, like with a lot of other DIs, because I've gotten to know a lot of the uh, SFPs, love a lot of them, but like the DI outlook on things is so, so different. And even in the moments where they just decide to do something, that's all it is. Whereas with me, there's a lot of almost inner anguish because I'm being so selfish. So it's always in the back of my mind, even though I know it's a needed thing. So it is this big tug of war. It kind of goes in circles. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, and, and I do think that having double activated DE, you know, does make a difference there and you're probably going to feel that tug of war more than say some than say like an SIFI that was like sleep consume for example because or you know or had play last because you know they they would be more in on the DI the DI function so yeah but but do you think that you ultimately feel responsible 
for your you know di in the end like, yeah when it in, in the end when it comes down to it mm -hmm. if it's one of those things of i need to go help these people or i need to get myself fixed the default is going to be myself because again i've been in, I've been in too many situations where i've caused damage to other people because i was a mess and mm -hmm. so for that and some abuse that i went through as a child i learned you can't fix somebody when you're broken Right, mm -hmm. I had broken people try to fix me. And so I have to be, not that we're ever gonna be perfect, but I have to be at a certain level of okay and healthy to help somebody else in that same area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that and that does sound consistent with Savior DI. Yeah, so I guess I'll ask Daniel, I mean, how is that, how is that for you? You know, you know if, you're, if you're DE, like, do you kind of feel like maybe the reverse of that, where you would need to make others okay first before you can make yourself okay? Yeah, that's certainly something I have felt. And um, I know we're probably not going to get into modalities yet, um, but I have what's, uh, the, what's referred to as, um, it was typed as double masculine SF, like the sleep, right? The SF yes. sleep. Same. So that comes off almost like in a, um, you know, I can accommodate people, but at some point I have to like assert myself. It's like, and if I don't get that, then I start to feel resentful. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, uh, I kind of get that. Get that too. It's like it, it's kind of like I'll accommodate you, but but you know. But there's always that invisible barrier, that line, you cross that line. And if I'm not careful enough, you know, I can just kind of break out and, you know, and <laughs> get a swing. Absolutely. You know, it's pretty. So, um, okay. So the other difference between standard and jumper ISTJs is standard ISTJs have savior thinking. Whereas jumper ISTJs have savior feeling. So kind of want to talk about the thinking feeling differences. So starting with Daniel, you know, how do you see your savior T and demon F working in your life? Yeah, I think uh, it's just more of a um, reliance, over-reliance on thinking through things logically or wanting to think through things logically, uh, even though sometimes I think <laughs> the logic may not be as sound, um, but it's like a uh, it's like a sort of a blanket that you kind of come back to, right? Um, and then the feeling does, I, like I said, I feel like I've gotten better at this over time where I've realized this gap that I've not fed into the feeling as much. And so now I, I do ask myself more often, how am I feeling about something? Um, but yeah, by default, it's just easier to think things through, problem solve, um, you know, all this whole uh, idea of like figuring things out. That's just, that's how it expresses itself. Okay, yeah. And I think it's similar with my, with myself too. And, and, and I think like sometimes too, like if somebody requests me to do something and, and I know that logically, it's something that needs to get done. You know, I'm kind of obligated to do that. And sometimes I don't feel like I'm allowed to assert my F5. If it's something I don't like. I can't just say, I don't like doing that because it doesn't seem like a strong enough reason. It's almost like I have to have a good reason for it. Like, like, like I could say, I don't have enough time and I can justify that I don't have enough time or I don't have the resources to do it because that, that, that I can justify with logic. But I, I don't feel right about saying, oh, I just don't want to do that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's kind of one way where it where it comes out for, for me. And then I think another example is um, kind of when choosing a career path, I, I majored in biochemistry and, and then I went to grad school and I thought I was going to get a PhD degree because because like, oh, people will see me as really intelligent and I'll, I'll get a really good career and, you know, there's all these TE reasons, but, but, F, but my FI wasn't happy. My heart was, wasn't in it. And I kind of did not do very well in graduate school. I really struggled be, because, because I was not very in touch with, with my feelings and to succeed in a PhD program, 
you really have to know that that's what you want to do because you're you're so intensely focused on a very specific area, you know, and you're doing it for so long. <laughs> yeah, I think you bring up a great point there, Laura, about the way I see introverted feeling is it's the drive, right? It's what motivates you. It can also be what holds you back from like a, a procrastination standpoint, right? Like if it if you're not in line with what those values are, then whatever TE reasons you can come up with, right? Like, oh, the tribe values this, the tribe thinks of this. Um, it's good. You're going to feel that tension at some point, right? It'll, uh -huh. it'll only, uh, your, your mileage will vary. You won't get very far. <laughs> so if, you, if right. your, your introverted feeling is not aligned, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was like, like in college, you know, I could, I could do really well in my class, even in my classes, even when my introverted feeling wasn't aligned. But I think in graduate school, it was a whole different ball game because you're kind of completely immersed into something really specific and you're going to be doing this project for four years and writing a thesis on it. And, and it's also a lot more self-directed too. You know, the motivation is coming more from within rather than people from the outside you know pushing you more so so you're kind of relying more on your on your di and your sleep to kind mm -hmm. of you know so yeah it was a shock for me okay um yeah so Brittany, you want to talk about your savior f sure it's it's very it's a very strange point of view because i still do a lot of logical thinking and pushing everything through, right? I'm still identifying a lot with what y'all are saying. But when it comes down and the grind hits the road, I've been that person that will stop. It doesn't matter what in the middle we're doing, having a conversation with someone, and I just feel something different in somebody. Are you okay? And how many people, I have, I've worked customer service my entire life. The job itself, logically, I hate. But because of the people I interact with and the people I've been able to help, I love that kind of work. Always have been. Been too many times I've been able to go around the counter with a complete stranger. Are you okay? And had an adult, male or female, fall mm -hmm. apart in my arms because I was the first person that actually saw them in 20 something years and openly cry with someone and 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 show them that I saw them as more than just walking flesh and it's 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 an amazing thing and yet terrifying at the same time because to for lack of a better word fall in love with a stranger so deeply you care so much for someone so deeply without knowing them even knowing you're going to get stepped on and hurt something I can't control it's something that happens so naturally because I know what that feels like to be in their shoes and to have have no one to only your logical side be what matters. And so I really think the reason I am a jumper was because my past made me be, right? It made me switch and start focusing on that emotional need because no one else was going to meet it for me. I was going to be a, uh, a two-auction cart. It was fighting against itself, never able to accomplish anything, never able to move forward. And so I started seeing how much emotional damage is in this world and how many people are so emotionally stunted, including myself for the longest time. And it's, it's become something I am very grateful for because I have been able to help so many. But it's also, there are definitely times where I wish I did because there are times when action needs to happen. And my response is, I'm going to fall apart and just turn into, you know, little Miss Weeping Mass of Nothing when there are actions that can be done that would actually help the situation. So both have their advantages and their disadvantages, and having that more of a balance does help. Yeah. But yeah, it leans to one extreme yeah. when it comes to the right. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I think when you're a double decider, too, you, you are a bit more balanced on the, on the TNF. And if you have, thinking double activated, you're kind of, you know, bringing that up. So, so I guess even though you have double activated TE, technically it's your demon. So can you explain a little bit more about that? Okay. 
And when you were talking about how, um, like you need permission to do the FI, I even have that struggle. I'm an FI savior, but I will have this huge struggle of how dare you be the selfish. Really, Brittany? They're crying over this little thing. Let's logic it out. There's no reason to cry here. Your emotions are fine. You're healthy. Everything's good. We're just over exaggerating everything. Breathe. And I'm having this argument with myself internally saying, breathe. Everything's good. Mm -hmm. Stop freaking out so you can actually move on with your life and get something done. Mm -hmm. And then I eventually just have to get to the point of, okay, none of this makes sense. There's no reason for this. I just have to let it happen and then move on. So I still have that. You're not allowed to do this, even though I'm saying you're the I type of yeah. mentality. Yeah. Which is uh, interesting. I mean, I think everyone, I think to everyone does everything. So, so, I mean, I think there's some of that and I don't know, environment, mm -hmm. upbringing, or, or maybe even just personal growth, wanting to be ba more balanced and not so fixed mindset. I think that definitely plays into that. But I think there's another thing too about, about jumpers is you know, TE is technically second in your stack. And I think with jumper types, their second function is strong just because it's second in the stack, even if it is a demon. So you- Just whacking you upside the back of the head. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think kind of jumpers might have an, a bit of an advantage in that way. Cause whereas for myself, you know, like FI is third in the stack. So, it, so it's farther down. Yeah, but at the same time, because it's actually your hobby and you don't like it doesn't go back and forth as much, you respect it a lot more than I do. Whereas I'm constantly going back and forth. And so it's almost like I've got three saviors, and so I disrespect all three. If that makes sense. Kind I mean, kind of, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, because I have SIFI sleep as my third animal, and the third animal is often called the hobby animal. So, so I am, you know, kind of doing it a lot in my leisure, you know, I'm, you know, indulging in the sensory things that I like, you know, let me, let me have a good, good meal, you know, put on some music and reminisce about the old times, you know, or, or just kind of, you know, just kind of thinking about where I'm headed, but it's kind of more in a concrete sensory way. So it's a little different than like NIF I sleep. Um, and then my FI is masculine too. So, so I think it is a little more solid there. And maybe I do kind of, well, I don't know if respect is the right, respect is the right word, but I feel more solidity there. Whereas I, I think maybe if it was feminine, maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that the distinction, uh, Brittany? Uh, is, uh, was your sensory type this feminine? No, I'm no? MF. Oh, MF, okay. I wasn't sure. My sleep is double masculine and first, which is, oh dear God, a monster. Um, but it's, it's, it's really, it comes across as being emotionally bipolar. You have these great time periods where you're doing really well and everything is great and you're able to uplift everyone else around you and then you swing into these big, huge sleep, you know, sleep tanks of, I need to go and way over process something for months and beat myself up because there's something here that has to change for me to stop sinking in the quicksand and move forward with my life. Because if I don't change, how can I change the world around me? And it's, it's this, it's this, forcing yourself, hammering yourself into the ground so that you can grow into something more. And yeah, so it has a lot of positives to it, but there's been so many times I have sunk into some very, very deep, deep, deep spirals because you get so obsessed on something. It can be the smallest thing, but you have to tear yourself apart and pick it apart. It, it's weird. Yeah. So, um, I'm looking at the timer here. I've got about nine and a half minutes left before my time runs out because I don't have the professional version of Zoom. So I just had like a, one more quick question and, and that is like, 
reading ISTJ descriptions and like maybe how a standard ISTJ interprets that versus like a jumper ISTJ, like Daniel, when you read an ISTJ description, do you like relate to it or, or not relate? Yeah, it's been a while since I last read it, but if I, I, the image that's coming to mind is like this old man, like who's an accountant, the, the one that comes from the um, 16 personalities website, I think that's the, the image that I have in my mind. Um, and I'm like, I don't think I ever considered accounting as like my profession. <laughs> um, but the the one, it, it when I did read the description a while back, it did sound like it was more rigid in its ways, like the, the personality, right? Um, and that's probably the hardest part for me to see, but it became obvious in the last relationship that I was in, it was like, oh, there are certain areas I noticed about myself where I'm like, yeah, I want things to be done a certain way. Um, and I was very not as, when I bend it on those ways, it was like, oh, it feels like I'm losing something, right? Um, and then the other part of it is the, uh, the exploring the um, the abstract space. Like I'm drawn to the ideas, concepts, and making connections in that space. And so that's why I thought I was originally INTP. Like and that is so funny abstract. because I had a, a def, I had an INTP P phase too, and, and that went for really? quite a while. And <laughs> similar. And I think it's not unusual, you know, to be fascinated by your demon functions, and sometimes you're kind of drawn to that. But mm -hmm. as SITE or your saviors, that's kind of what you're responsible for. And it's kind of more the role that you're playing in, you're playing in society. Because I would say similar things when I read the ISTJ descriptions. It's like, oh, it, it seems so rigid. It seems so resistant to change. But, but, then, but then in my, my actual life, it's like, yeah, I, I guess I kind of am closest to that type. So... Now, how about you, Brittany, as a as a jumper? Do you relate to the ISTJ descriptions? Um, honestly, not only was it me, like everyone that typed me, other than Mark, my husband, and one of his twin types are the only two that actually pretty much tagged me perfectly. But like everybody was sure I was an EJ because of the fact, like I said. Trying to see that introverted side of myself was so hard because even when I go inward, it's on the behalf of others. They're still the main thing in my mind. So it was hard to see myself as introverted. So that for me was the biggest thing to get used to. But everything else, as far as wanting control, always knew that that was not an issue. I understood that from day one. Um, I've always been that type of person. Um, but yeah, so for the most part, I was on board with it. It was just trying to really see myself as putting myself first. That took time because all of my social interaction, all of the things I was doing were resolving around people. So that's the only thing that I really struggled on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I mean, I mean, I guess too with your animal stacking. I mean, well, in OPS terms, you would be more extroverted, and, and they kind of say like, if you're sleep, blast, play, you know, like they're they're, they're kind of they can be really energetic. They can kind of steam <laughs> their way through things. Like once they've sleep processed it, it's like boom. Whereas I think with blast sleep play I don't know it's a little more I don't know it doesn't come off as extrovert it's a little more in the middle and, you know, and, yeah, I had and even, even with myself blast play sleep it's like you know eventually I'm just going to kind of have a dip you know in energy I had somebody describe this to me a friend who's like you're kind of like like your energy is kind of like uh it could be like a pup, puppy like energy but then all of a sudden you'll like look up like like there's a sound that distracted you and then like and then you'll come back to the conversation like that kind of energy and i was like oh that's interesting that you <laughs> say that, that that's probably like the the blast sleep play kind of thing maybe happening mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I've oh. always been called Energizer Bunny. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And when it comes, it's, it's way out there. It's yeah. sometimes a little too extreme. And then out of nowhere, batteries crash and you're down. Okay. Um, any any other final comments you want to say about being a standard ISTJ or jumper ISTJ? Only thing I can say that still kind of dumbfounds me to this day is how many people go, oh, you're a rare type. Awesome. Not really. It kind of sucks having a type where you don't have a lot of people that you can pull from and be able to use as almost this kind of check and balance for yourself. Because almost, I think I've got one technical twin type right now. Everybody else, even in my SIFI group, mm -hmm. are all double feminine. And it's amazing, even just that simple uh, switch, how different we are and how yeah. some of the things they do, I can't even support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, there's, and I mean, there's other factors too, you know, there's, you know, you're in the environment you were raised in, there's, do you have a growth or fixed mindset? You know, there, there, there's a lot of other factors too. I don't know too many people my my exact type. You know, Brene Brown is is my my type twin among among famous people, and and it's like I really like look up to her and admire her. But sometimes I feel like she's too good to me. I'm like, am I am I worthy of her being my twin? You know, but she's you know super growth mindset, very self realized, and and then in the OPS community, I, I do have like one one other type identical type twin, but I don't think she's very active in the community. How about you, Daniel? You know, do you relate to your type twins or? I I remember looking at, there's two, I think, on, on the class notes. Um, and I couldn't see myself with them. Like, I couldn't relate to them. It, the, the energy didn't feel the same. But that's probably just because they were also presenting a certain way, right? They were in interviews. And so maybe yeah. if they had... If I saw the, a different side of them, like at home, maybe they might present something else and it might be more relatable. Um, now I was going to ask Brittany, are you, you're like very close to Cherie, right? Except I think Cherie's a double feminine. Yes, Cherie is double feminine. The only person in the community that is my type is Alexandra. And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember her last name. And she's the only one that's actually my type. The only reason I even brought this up is I'm just amazed at how many people are like, I wish I was a rare type. I was actually super disappointed when I found out I was a rare type. Mm -hmm. Just because for me, it's important to have, right? The more data points I can have. You've got about one minute left. left. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got about one minute left here. So. Um, I want to thank you both for coming and representing the ISTJs. We're going to have two more videos in the series. Our next one is going to be different animal stacks and ISTJs. And then the third one will be um, sexual modalities and ISTJs. If you want to see those videos, um, subscribe to my channel. Um, hit the bell for notifications. I also have another video series that I'm doing with ESTJ, Brian Bertrand. And, and we've got some more SI videos on there as well. So thanks for coming. Bye. Bye.